So one of the things that you talk about often now is having sort of a harrowing experience as a child actor. And the reason I want to go back to this statement is I think it's really important for child actors who are getting into the industry to understand what they're putting themselves into and also potentially the family members or the team members that are putting them into that. I was born into the industry. So I had that protection already from a figure that knew sort of what you were putting yourself into and when to pull me out when it got too much. And so from you, this word harrowing, which I don't think many child actors come out to talk about because they also are concerned about how it may inflict on their current careers. Um, You know, what did that mean to you back then? Because then it leads me into this wonderful work that you're doing now to try and protect child actors. Mm -hmm. To your point, it's true that a lot of actors are apprehensive about coming forward because they're nervous about not being hired as often if they are ruffling feathers. Um, So I actually took it upon myself to teach myself production and content creation, and I started building out different workshops and revenue streams uh, in my personal life so that I've had a little bit more confidence coming forward, knowing, okay, if I get fired or released for, you know, raising some flags, then I will be okay. I am, you know, far more self-sustained now than I was five, 10 years ago when I was hyper-dependent on whether or not I booked the next gig. Um, So I think, you know, speaking to the the psychological impact on a child, it is very complicated for someone to understand who is not in this unique, very strange situation. Yeah. But for all of us, we have to acknowledge that in those formative years, you are getting your first example, not second or third, but your first example of what reality even is. Mm. So if I, as a child, am going into a room and I'm living out a variety of scenes, some joyful, some traumatic, yeah. um, some full of grief, and I am learning that my day-to-day experience is to embody really heavy or extreme scenarios and do it in front of strangers in a sterile room and wait for them to either approve of me or reject me, I'm learning a lot of subtle lessons about interacting with people, about, um, you know, what, how that's tied to my own survival. Because if I get the job, then I have money to pay for food. If I don't get the job, then I got to find out other ways of of getting my basic needs met. And so that's me at seven years old, thinking about things that maybe a typical seven-year-old is not. And on top of that, if you experience a certain kind of fame or notoriety, you've got this added awareness of your own sense of physical safety because you are constantly aware of being followed, being stared at, and some of that can be harmless, you know, a, a fan or of your work. Some of it can be full-blown uh, stalker profiles and people maybe trying to injure you. Um, so, you know, or folks who believe that they're in a an intimate relationship with you because you've been in their household on their flat screen um, every day, even though you haven't met them ever. So it's a lot of layers that are far more complex than just, um, oh, it was sad that I had to cry on cue. And it's hard for people to unpack that. But I think what's important is I'm not coming forward just because I want people to care about my story. This is actually, it's a group cause here. This is a societal issue of how we utilize media in our day-to-day lives, how it influences what your children think when they're growing up about themselves, um, what we think about concepts like love or justice. Um, There are so many ways that all of our lives are, are inextricably connected through media And by us finding wiser ways 
to you know protect the well-being of artists as well as be maybe mindful and more ethical about how we film and what we film we're actually making space for healthier societies <laughs> um yeah. overall <laughs> 